Hey guys, welcome back to another snapshot video. Today's highlights are the new lush caves that get added and Mojang is using some new rendering tech for Minecraft. The new lush caves haven't been added yet to the normal world generation. You need to create a single biome world for that. So all you gotta do is create a new world, then go to more world options and world type single biome, customize and select the lush caves. All right, and there we go, we got a new world. The reason why you have to do this is that the 3D biomes weren't added yet. So it's basically not possible that you would have um, a normal plains biome here at the top and then a cave biome below. If you check in F3, basically every biome, even up to sky limit, is a lush cave. So that's the reason yeah, why you gotta do it like this. All right, let's check out the new lush caves. So at the moment, literally every single cave you can find is a lush cave. So if you create such a world. So the normal old style caves are lush caves, but also the new ones, bigger, bigger caves that got added recently. Yeah, here we got one. It's now a lush cave variant in such a world. It's a bit dark in here. I would say we use some night vision. You can yeah, check it out. So let's actually see what we got here. So we got a lot of moss blocks, the ceiling as well. The, then we got some glow berries. Um, there's also azalea bushes, vines here on the side, um, grass, of course, moss carpet, and I think we can also find a spore blossom. You have the particles around, and here got some drip leaves, mostly surrounded by clay. It's also really interesting that there's so much clay around, so, because clay is definitely a block that it, it's usually a bit harder to get if you like building with bricks. Obviously, you can trade with the stonemason to get uh, clay, but um, yeah, another alternative might be just to go to a lush cave and mine some. There's definitely plenty around here. Here we got another very nice looking impression of the new lush cave with a mine shaft going through it. I think this looks fantastic compared to the old caves, which were a little bit plain. I think definitely adds a bit of atmosphere to it. Yeah, I think Mojang did a really good job with those. If you look at the ceiling of the lush cave, you sometimes can also see patches of rooted dirt and hanging roots. Now, if you check out what's on top of this, there should actually be one of the new azalea trees, yes. So if you find one of those trees somewhere around a plains biome or different biomes, not quite sure how it's, where they will generate, probably everywhere actually in the world, um, you can dig down and then you will find more of the rooted dirt. And if you just Basically, dig straight down. You should come across a lush cave. Let's actually check it out. Yeah, it even replace the stone generation partially. In case you need to dig down really quick, this might actually be a trick. Because you can insta mine dirt, but stone you can't without a beacon. This might also be a nice way to get down quicker, since there's a lot of dirt to mine. Okay, and there we are. This is the underside. And here we have another example. It's actually interesting. Here the rooted dirt actually goes through two caves. So here we got the first one. There's some rooted dirt on the ground. And yeah, there's more. And then we finally got yeah, the hanging roots here on the ceiling. So it seems like it would always pick the lowest cave. Oh, this looks a little bit out of place. I found some deep slate gold ore between the clay. I think there's only one logical solution to this problem. We need to add ores for every single block, so clay ore, etc. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe they can just yeah, change it so it wouldn't generate here between. Yeah, speaking of new ores, there's also new variants that were added for the map makers. So deep slate, uh, copper ore, coal ore, and emerald ore. You won't be able to find those in a normally generated world. So it's just added for the map maker so you can find them in the creative inventory. But they work like normal ores, so you can put them in a furnace and smelt them. But yeah, as I said, can't get them in a normal world. Let's keep talking about the ores for a second. So the ore distribution changed once again, but it's still probably not final. So this is a bit hard to visualize, so let's just go through the list real quick. So you will find more emeralds in mountain biomes, and there will be more lapis in general, but less copper, gold, and redstone. And here's the probably the most important change. You will find less diamonds overall. So the change they made is that the blobs will become smaller, but a little bit more frequent. But overall, you will find less diamond. So in case you want to stock up on diamonds, probably best if you actually mine in the 1.16 
version, because in the new update you'll probably find less. Then, yeah, there's also less iron ore generation, and it will generate lower again. And the air exposure um, levels of coal ore also got changed, so you won't find them as frequently at the side of um, a cave wall, for example. You can also go underground real quick and check out the new blob size of the diamond ore. So I removed some of the deep slate down here. Let's see if we can see some iron ore patches. So here is one for diamond ore, but I found more. Yeah, here's only a single diamond ore. Here we got only two, but it definitely become rarer. In 1.16 and older versions, it wasn't really too uncommon to find eight diamond ore next to each other. That seems like it's not possible anymore. Okay, here's also more. Let's maybe try to take those out. Yeah, only two. Seems like the amount was pretty much halved even, but it's definitely a drastic change. There's one more thing about the diamond ores. So those fossil structures that you can find in the overworld very rarely sometimes generate as coal ore structures. In case it's between the deep set, they would actually generate as diamond ores. So it could come across uh, what seems to be a large vein of diamond ore. Those would have been a fossil. I actually tried my hardest to find one, but I had no success. But yeah, in case you ever find a lot of diamond or more place, uh, this was probably a fossil. Let's not forget about the Celia tree itself, because the first time those generate. So if you take a look at them, the lock is made out of oak wood. I was kind of hoping we would actually get a Celia logs and new planks and so on, but apparently that's not the case. If you look at the generation, kind of remind me a little bit of the acacia trees with the branches on the side. But even a bit more extreme. Okay, so if we break all of the locks, the leaves will also decay. Speed this up real quick. And then uh, normal sticks uh, would drop. And also azalea bushes. I was kind of hoping that we could uh, bone mill those and they would act like saplings or they would grow themselves over time into new trees. But it seems like it's not the case. I'm also not sure this might be added later. It would definitely be a nice thing. Uh, because this way then also the azalea leaves would be renewable and maybe also similar to the 2v2 spruce tree generation the dirt below the grass below could be converted into the rooted dirt then this would also be renewable this would definitely be something i wish that would get added later let's talk about deep slate next because a couple new deep slate blocks got added and some new crafting recipes all right we will also now find infested deep slate in mountain biomes it basically just means that there's a silverfish inside. There we go. And you can also now smelt the cobbled deep slate and get normal deep slate this way. It looks similar to smelting cobble and getting normal stone out of it. And here it is. Okay, here we got the new deep slate. It's good because then you can also show something else. The top texture changed once again. And now you can also place those blocks with the top texture on the side if you need this for some kind of build, for example. So now you, you can basically place them like locks or pistons uh, facing a certain direction. Okay, then let's continue. New deep slate blocks. There's also now a cracked variant of the deep slate tiles and deep slate bricks. And we have a crafting recipe for those as well. So in order to make um, deep slate bricks, we need to make polished deep slate first, then we can craft it again into deep slate bricks, and if we craft those again, we can get the deep slate tiles. And if you put those in a furnace, you can get the cracked variant. According to the patch notes, lightning rods can also now be waterlocked, but I was not able to recreate this, so if I try with a bucket here, I can't place any water, and maybe try to push over. The rod, it also replaces the water. I could maybe try a dispenser. Maybe it just doesn't have the functionality. It maybe should try a set block command. This could be... Yeah, let's actually try a set block command. Set block, lightning rod. No, it doesn't even have a state for it. It seems like they just forgot about yeah, adding that. Next, let's also talk about the new rendering tech that Mojang is using and some of the new features. So first of all, the game still looks the same, obviously, 
but some people at the top have said they have a bit higher performance. Personally, I didn't notice a difference in terms of FPS, but it's probably depending on the system. They also have the possibility now to use shaders directly as a resource pack, so you don't need to use Optifine anymore to use shaders. Xylefian, the Mojang developer, also shared some to test out. So let's try this one here. Basically just in your resource pack folder, you can then select it. So here we got a bit of yeah, waves going on with the water. It's just for testing, so this looks a bit weird if you have a single water source. The water is moving in there, but it's just to show the possibility. And here we got leaves moving, so nice wind effect. There is one more thing we need to talk about. According to the patch notes, you can now summon a slime of a size of 128. I'm going from memory here, but I think the limit before was 64. So let's try it out. Let's summon a slime. And yeah, that one is definitely larger than the ones I summoned before in creative. Oh my god. <laughs> Damn, okay, we probably even can't really hit it. No, trying. Uh, but we can use a command to split him up at least. So let's kill all slimes in the world. And we should, yeah. One of them despawn immediately, because it was too far away. But I can definitely keep reducing the size and it would split up. And eventually, we get a lot of normal sized ones. There we go. I think those are some you can actually get. Now we just got the small ones and now we break them down. This would m maybe be also a nice idea for some kind of mini boss, a huge sl slime in swamps sometimes. I would like that. And one last thing, the gif command also has been adjusted. Last week's snapshot, I think you could actually give yourself more than a couple million blocks at once, which would basically crash your game. Now the limit of items you can give yourself at once would be 6400. It would fill a complete inventory. I guess if I go in survival mode, it would also drop down. Yeah, there we go again. <laughs> Summoned a lot of items at once. Should we actually try it with a non-stackable item? Immediately getting attacked by a <laughs> phantom. Let's be quick. Iron X. Can't give more than 100 of that. Okay. So you can only get 100 stacks at once so the game doesn't crash. Makes sense. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.